What is love? Is it merely an emotion, a fleeting feeling, or is there more to it? This age-old question has puzzled philosophers, poets, artists, and thinkers alike. Love, an intriguing enigma, is a concept that is as vast as it is profound. It transcends borders, breaks barriers, and binds hearts, yet it's often misunderstood or oversimplified. In our journey through life, we encounter various interpretations of love. Some perceive it as a powerful emotion that can move mountains, while others view it as a basic human need, as essential as the air we breathe. Yet there are others who regard it as a complex mesh of feelings, a concoction of joy, fear, excitement, and sometimes even pain. These perspectives, while valid in their own right, merely scratch the surface of what love truly is. They often focus on the romantic or familial aspect of love, leaving out the broader, more encompassing nature of this profound sentiment. However, in our quest to understand love, we often overlook a vital source that offers a profound and comprehensive definition of love, the Bible. This ancient text, revered and respected by millions around the world, provides an insightful perspective on love, one that goes beyond the surface and delves into the heart of what it truly means to love. In Corinthians 13, 4, 7, we come across a description of love that is both profound and enlightening. It paints a picture of love that is patient, kind, devoid of envy, and not boastful. A love that is not proud, does not dishonor others, and is not self-seeking. It speaks of a love that keeps no record of wrongs and never fails. This interpretation of love, as described by Jesus Christ, is both thought-provoking and inspiring. But what does the Bible, specifically Corinthians 13, 4, 7 say about love? Let's delve deeper. This is the journey we're about to embark on, to unravel the enigma of love, to understand its essence, and to explore its depth and breadth through the lens of one of the most influential texts in human history. So let's begin, shall we? The Bible begins its description of love by saying, love is patient, love is kind. Diving into the depths of these words, we find an ocean of wisdom. Love, in its purest form, is characterized by an enduring patience. It is the kind of patience that weathers all storms, that stands firm in the face of trials and tribulations. It's not a passive waiting, but an active endurance that's laced with hope. It's a patience that doesn't simply grit its teeth and bear it, but one that cherishes, nurtures, and holds on, even when the winds of adversity threaten to rip everything apart. And then, it says, love is kind. It's not just about being nice or polite, this is a kindness that goes beyond the surface, that reaches into the heart of another, and says, I see you, I value you, and I wish you well. It's a kindness that's willing to step into another's shoes, to understand their feelings, their struggles, their joys. It's a kindness that extends itself, even when it's not convenient, even when it's not reciprocated. These are not just feel-good words. They carry a profound truth about the nature of love. They tell us that love is not just a feeling, it's an action. It's a choice to be patient, to be kind, even when it's hard, even when it hurts. And this love, this patient, kind love, is not a human invention. It's a divine gift, a reflection of the very heart of God. For God himself is patient with us, bearing with our weaknesses, our failures, our shortcomings. And God is kind to us, showering us with blessings, even when we don't deserve them. This is the love that we see in Jesus Christ. A love that was patient enough to endure the cross, kind enough to forgive even those who crucified him. A love that was willing to lay down his life for us even when we were still sinners. Patience and kindness, therefore, are not mere attributes, they are the very essence of love. Moving further, the verse continues, it does not envy, it does not boast. Now let's delve into these profound words and their implications. Envy and boastfulness, these are traits that breed discontent and rivalry. They fuel comparison leading us away from appreciating our blessings and focusing on the achievements of others. But you see, love, as Jesus described it, transcends these negative traits. It fosters a sense of contentment, urging us to find joy in what we have, rather than pining for what others possess. Love refrains from boasting, choosing instead to embody humility. It doesn't seek validation or applause, for it finds satisfaction in its own existence, its own authenticity. Remember, my friends, love is not a race. It's not a competition to outdo others. It's about acceptance, understanding, and humility. It's about celebrating our blessings, not comparing them. Thus, love is not about comparison or competition, but about acceptance and humility. The verse proceeds, it is not proud, it does not dishonor others. 
These words, though simple, bear a profound truth about the essence of love. Now let's journey together into the depths of these phrases. Pride, as we know, is a sense of one's self-worth, often inflated, and it can be a roadblock in the path of love. When we are filled with pride, we often put ourselves above others, allowing our ego to take the driver's seat. But love, as described in Corinthians, does not have room for pride. It calls for humility, for acknowledging that we are no better or worse than our fellow beings, just different in our unique ways. It's about appreciating the beauty in these differences, not belittling them out of a sense of superiority. Next, we come across the phrase, it does not dishonor others. Disrespect like pride is a poison that can seep into the heart of love and corrode it from within. It sows seeds of resentment and hurt, which can grow into thorny vines that choke the life out of love. When we dishonor others, we strip them of their dignity, reducing them to mere objects of our disdain. But love, as described by Jesus, does not allow for such transgressions. It is built on a foundation of respect and understanding. It acknowledges the inherent dignity of every individual, regardless of their status, their beliefs, or their past mistakes. It does not seek to belittle or humiliate, but rather uplifts and honors. So in essence, love is a delicate dance between humility and respect. It is not about towering over others in pride, nor is it about trampling over their dignity. It is about walking hand in hand on the same level, treating each other with kindness and respect. So love, in its purest form, is humble and respectful, acknowledging the dignity of every individual. The verse goes on to say, it is not self-seeking, it keeps no record of wrongs. Here we're shown a beautiful aspect of love, its selflessness. Love, as described by Jesus, is not about satisfying our own desires or needs. Instead, it's about putting others first, about seeking their well-being, their happiness, and their growth. This self-giving nature of love brings us to another facet, its forgiving spirit. Love keeps no record of wrongs. It doesn't hold on to bitterness, resentment, or grudges. Instead, it forgives, it lets go, and it moves forward. It understands that we all are fallible, that we all make mistakes. Love chooses to focus on the good, to build on the positive, and to seek reconciliation. It doesn't dwell on past hurts, but embraces the possibility of a brighter future. True love, then, is not self-centered, but self-giving, and it forgives, holding no grudges. And finally, the verse concludes, love never fails. This is the ultimate testament to the power of love, as described in Corinthians. The enduring and unyielding nature of love is its most remarkable quality. It is not a fleeting emotion or a temporary state of being. Love, in its truest and purest form, is constant, steadfast, and unchanging. Think about it for a moment. How often have we seen love stand strong in the face of adversity? How often have we witnessed love persisting even when all odds are stacked against it? That's because love, as defined in the biblical context, isn't merely an emotion. It's an act of will, a conscious decision to persist, to endure, to keep going no matter what. This enduring nature of love isn't just about romantic relationships. It extends to all forms of love. Love for your friends, your family, your community, and even for strangers. It's about choosing to love, even when it's hard, even when it hurts, even when it seems impossible. It's about holding on to love, even when everything else is falling apart. This is the love that Jesus Christ spoke of in Corinthians. A love that never fails, that never gives up, that never runs out. It's a love that stays, even when people leave. A love that heals, even when there's pain. A love that gives, even when there's nothing left to give. Love, in this sense, is a beacon of hope. It's a light in the darkness, a rock in the storm. It's the one thing that remains even when everything else fades away. Because love, true love, never fails. So when we talk about love according to Jesus Christ, we're not just talking about a feeling. We're talking about a commitment, a conviction, a way of life. We're talking about a love that is patient, that is kind, that does not envy, that does not boast, that is not proud, that does not dishonor others, that is not self-seeking, that keeps no record of wrongs, and that never fails. So love, as described in Corinthians 13, 4, 7, is patient, kind, humble, respectful, forgiving, and enduring. In conclusion, the biblical interpretation of love is profound and all-encompassing. It teaches us patience, kindness, humility, and selflessness. It urges us to honor others, to let go of our wrongs, and to never lose faith. This is the essence of love as described by Jesus Christ in Corinthians 13, 4, 7. 
a love that's enduring, unyielding, and unfailing. If you like this video, share the love and spread the word of Jesus Christ. Hit the like button and subscribe to become a part of our family. Remember, love never fails.